Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24. Marco. Sean. I uh, I was checking out uh, my wallet the other day. Your wallet? My wallet. Yeah. The real one or the, <laughs> <laughs> the virtual my, wallet? The virtual wallet. I don't um, know. Mine are both empty. So it doesn't and, and mine was too, which is the sad <laughs> part. <laughs> <laughs> was it full before and then was empty? Because mine was just empty from the beginning. Uh, I, I had spent ton, money on the tons wallet. Of, tons of coin in there. And oh. uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, coin? But that, Have you won or, or the, <laughs> you know, the one up in the air? We don't know what exactly. The one in the air. There, there <laughs> are many, many different coins, and I'm not talking about the, the quarter or the, or the half penny. But uh, <laughs> no, I think. But, the sad reality is that, of course, coins, especially recently, a lot of coins have risen in value, and uh, people people like money, virtual or otherwise, if they can get their hands on it. And they, uh, they've, I think they've figured out a way to to understand or learn who has coin, where they have it, and uh, target those folks through many different ways and. Turns out, our good friend Chris Pearson from Black Cloak. Chris, good, to, good to have you on. Great to be here. Yeah, He's so patient. We were I know. without rambling. Without rambling. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I can barely do it. No, I'm joking. But the uh, Chris and his team, I'm gonna talk over you for a minute, Chris. Uh, continue to look at the world of of uh, threats targeting individuals. Uh, specifically executives and high net worth folks and private equity and venture capital investors and you name it. To, if somebody has money, guess what? Somebody wants a chunk of their cash somehow, some way. Some do it through normal means like, hey, I have an idea. Can I pitch you, the, <laughs> can I pitch you this idea? You give me some money and hopefully we make some more money together. Others go around the backside and say, they have money. I'm going to figure out a way to grab it. And uh Chris and his team have done a lot of research on this front uh, and have uncovered some things that I think are really interesting. So I'm, I'm excited to get into this, Chris. Um, yeah, yeah be, before we do, though, I know you, you've been on the show a number of times. Uh, Marco did a post on LinkedIn. I don't know how many years ago we we met you ah. and I, when you had this great idea of of Black Cloak, and we're like, this is so cool. We're so excited for you to get this going, and it and it's tremendous to see the growth. Um, for those that haven't heard from you yet on the show, or haven't met you yet out in this, out on the the circuit, if you will, uh, a few words about you and and a broader picture of what you're doing with with Black Cloak. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's always good to be back here with you guys, uh, both Marco and Sean, both of you. Um, well, yeah, you know, I'm Chris Pierce. I'm a CEO, founder of Black Cloak. Uh, Black Cloak is digital executive protection. We protect corporate executives, C-suite board members, ELT teams. It could be one, 10, 50. It could be 300 individuals at companies. We protect them in their personal lives, the area where the CISO doesn't want to go for privacy and, and legal reasons, where they definitely don't want to go from a pain point perspective. And we go in and protect that, which is outside the four walls of the castle. We protect their personal lives, their families' personal lives, personal devices, privacy, device protection, the home protection, and then quite honestly, the concierge. We also do that same thing for high net worth, ultra high net worth individuals. So it's a same population because they're both going to be really highly exposed, high profile individuals. Um, but you know, that, that side gets really, really fun as well. You know, celebrity, politician, rock star, uh, folks that are just, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal wealth and all the rest. And so they are, um, you know, a lot of times they'll have physical protection, um, they'll kidnap and ransom protection and all the rest. Um, but on the cyber front, uh, they are left, uh, you know, left to defend themselves with, you know, 999 point solutions uh, that really don't do the job for their crazy life and their lives are crazy. So love doing that, you know, former CISO, former chief privacy officer and, but, you know, 10 years in as a special government employee into the, uh, into DHS. But I mean, you know, really it's all of that that's informed us as to what we're doing, where we want to go and kind of solving the pains of the past for me. Yep. I love it. And what we've had 
a few discussions where we look at this from the ELT, the executive perspective. So we've talked about the idea that companies provide protections against ransom, uh, provide healthcare protection, provide, uh, uh, yeah, other, yeah, other types of protection. I can't remember all the ones we talked about, but when we start looking at rock stars who have a lot of money, they want to invest that money. They become an investor. They're not sitting behind a corporate firewall, right? They're probably not even, and we'll talk about the the VC firms and, and those folks as well, but I'm just thinking like a rock star or some, uh, 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 an actor or whatever. They put their money into something that, that they don't have the backing of a firm, whether it be a VC firm or something else. So they really are sitting out there, but it's not hard to figure out that they've invested in something. No, not at all. And, and, uh, you know, for a lot of, a uh, lot of, enter- I mean, number one, if it's going to be in their own name or in through some separate family office construct that they have, they advertise it, it's known and uh, ultimately SEC documents get out there. So, you know, that they're an investor, you know what they're doing. Um, I mean, they have all sorts of weird footprints. I mean, they're full blown studios in their homes, the intellectual property that's there on personal quote unquote devices, uh, they're owned by them is just astonishing. I mean, their attack surface is so massive, so massive, uh, but also in the area of investments and some some great some actors are like amazingly wonderful. They have VC firms. They have some great investments. Uh, Action Kutcher being one of them, uh, right? They they their their VC firms are quite uh, you know have a laundry list of uh, quite amazing investments and opportunities. You know, there, there is a, a psychology aspect on this, right? I mean, we we talk a lot of since the beginning, like it's there's a psychology of bringing the privacy and protection. In their home, we always talk about, you know, the, the CISO in the corporate doesn't want to eventually deal with that. I mean, it could, but it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's inviting their privacy. So there's that element of privacy they want to they wanna retain if they work for a big company. They are not working in a big company, but, you know, there is a lot of bleeding in between one and the other. And then there is the psychology of being independent, like in that case, and maybe posting yeah. that they bought, you know, cryptocurrency, and they posted on Instagram. And so, uh, you know, that's pretty public right there. Honestly. So that psychology behind it, you guys look into into that as well, right? We do. Um, I mean, think about it this way is that, you know, and especially with what the friend intelligence team here at Black Cloak has uncovered uh, uh, in just re- like released today, kind of uh, uh, out on the wires is the fact of the matter is, is that if you are investing in something else and you're getting shares, options, RSUs for it, those are going to be things that are publicly listed. If you're a VC, if you're PE, you're going to be putting up the logos on your website. Um, once the investment is done, usually you have, you know, somewhere in that, that 30 to 90 day period of time to go ahead and post it. And so your logo, you're putting up the logo for that investment it might be a crypto, might be a wallet, might be a whatever, but you're putting up the logo, you're telling your story and you're doing it. Number one, to like make sure people know what you're doing. Make sure people see that your firm is active, that you're active, know your expertise, but also so that other future folks might know who to call if they want to get investment in the financial area, in the crypto area, in the mining area, whatever it is. Um, and so that becomes something that is extraordinarily public for you, the partner, the principal at the VC firm or Pete private equity firm. And it becomes something that is public and notoriety uh, for the actual firm itself. Right? It's one of the big tiles, one of the big tombstones that goes up on the site. Hey, we invent, uh, we invested in Acme Coin. We invested in Acme Wallet. You know, this is the type of firm that we are because we won the deal, we won the relationship, we won the trust, and we're able to help. And you know, potentially, right? Their imputed success is also because of us and our wisdom helping the founders achieve greater things. And so, quite honestly, in terms of VC firms, PE firms and the like, uh, even private investors, they want to shout from the mountaintops as to what their investments are, what they're doing, um, attract in more LPs that are going to right give more money into the firm. Um, and then you have a bigger fund to go ahead and invest with. So these, these folks, uh, their job is to invest. And some of them, it's also to act or play guitar or something else, right? Paint yeah. paintings. So they, they have a job, an original job, some of them, that then turned into an investor job. 
their job isn't cybersecurity, right? Their, their, their job is to not understand everywhere they're exposed, both physically from uh, from their home perspective, digitally from mm-hmm. from their device perspective, and then I'll say mentally from a sociological perspective, yeah. social engineering perspective. So can, can you talk to me about some of those, maybe those are the three things, maybe there's something else as well, but those areas where they either don't understand or maybe don't have an idea of how to how to protect themselves in those areas. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's interesting. Whether you're a venture capitalist, a VC, or somebody that's in private equity, if you're someone that's investing in, in that population, you essentially are going to have one cell phone, one tablet, and one computer. That's it. Your goal is to have as many people know about you as possible. So your firm, you know, acmevc.com, your firm email is known. It's up on the site. In fact, your cell phone is many times known because you handed it, used to hand it out on business cards. You bump the phones now, whatever. You want to get what's called deal flow. You want people saying, Hey, wow, that guy, you know, Chris, that guy, Larry, that guy, you know, that person, uh, Jennifer, whatever they are, the. They are the movers and shakers in this area. You should meet them. You should introduce yourself to them. Let me help get you connected. And so that information is out there. But your personal life is inextricably intertwined with your corporate life. One device, one cell, one tablet, one computer. You're not double duding it. You have one. Yeah, you might have a Gmail address too, but essentially you got one number and all the rest. And so what that becomes is a, as it relates to the firm and the firm computer, it's protected. Your cell phone tablet aren't necessarily going to be protected. Your home network's not protected where you're, you're working out of home as well as coffee shops, quite honestly. And your personal email is not protected as well. And of course, that's the keys of the kingdom for your crypto accounts, wallet accounts, all the rest. And so if you're in the position of being a VC, a PE, you have that footprint where your personal life and your work life are just totally combined. There is no separating it and things that you might invest in. Uh, in terms of your firm and you invest in, you oftentimes use, <laughs> right? If you're an investor in Under Armour, guess what? You're not walking into a board meeting wearing a bunch of Nike stuff, uh, right? You're wearing Under Armour stuff. Uh, if you're an investor in CrowdStrike, guess what? Your VC firm is all going to be using CrowdStrike. Whatever you had before, you're ripping it out. You just gave them $50 million, $200 million of fuel growth. You are going to be eating that all up and you're going to be going full in. When VC firms invest and P firms invest, they go full tilt on whatever it is. They, if they're right, if they're any good. If they're not, it's kind of a different story. But right, they want to go full in. They put in their LPs, their limited partners, their investors' money from the funds into that company. So they want to use it as it relates to like cryptocurrency and wallets and things like that, and, and things in the financial sector. They also use that too. They eat their own dog food. They invest it. They use it. So the methodology here, it's, I mean, it, I feel like it's a little bit different, but we've talked about yeah. what they do, right? They, they go lateral, they go to the family, they, they go on the dark web, they cross-reference the information that are public, as you say, and then, yeah. then what? Yeah, so I mean, here's the thing that the, the Black Cloak Friend team uh, 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 uncovered. We've uncovered an alarming trend, an alarming escalation in venture capital firms, venture capital individuals, private equity firms, private equity individuals being targeted because of the investments they've made in crypto, in wallets, and things of the same sort, of the same elk. They are being targeted in their personal lives. So we'll just say, you know, Coinbase, favorite, you know, popular wallet of, of many. It's public, which VC firms, and they call it 10 VC firms invested in Coinbase. Well, it's public that it's those 10 firms and it's public that there are two, three people that are part of the deals. You know, one partner that might be on the board and you have one or two observers. It's public of who they are. And it's public of the information as to who they are. And people are deducing, cyber criminals are now deducing and now specifically sniper targeting those individuals and those firms for cryptocurrency scams, for attacks into their wallets, for attacks into their crypto holdings, because they know more likely than not which ones they have, what wallets they have, and what things from a crypto perspective they're involved in. 
They also have it from the fireside chats. They have it from the webinars. They have it from the different town hall meetings they do. All that stuff, especially in COVID, is all digital. It's all been broadcast everywhere. And they are finally, finally targeting them. And they're winning. That's the other cool thing. They're actually winning. Super smart audience, robust audience. They're winning. How are they doing it, Marco? Well, some of the same tactics. Number one, they've identified the audience. Specifically, they identified the audience because of who's invested in what. Number two, they're grabbing in data broker information. So about 200 data brokers in the US, the 401.com, Spokio, Zeba Search, all the rest. They're grabbing in, they're making sure they have the right cell phone number and they're grabbing in that personal Gmail address, Yahoo address, whatever it is. They're grabbing in that personal email address and they're also doing the same for the other family members. Doing the same for the other family. Maybe Larry won't click on the crypto thing saying, hey, your wallet is, uh, uh, key is, is expired. Go in and click here to re-enable. Maybe he or she, the person that's working at the VC firm in their personal life, maybe they won't go ahead and do that. But what about the spouse or significant other or the husband or the wife? What about them? Are they at that same level of education and training by which they are not doing it? Perhaps not. And if they are not and they get access, right? Reset the password, all the rest, they're getting access. That's what we're seeing. So we're seeing data broker information leading to the intelligence that is needed to launch the attack. The other cool thing is a lot of this is happening because people of this ilk, they have dual factor turned on, but most of them have it turned on via SMS text messages. So they have it turned on via Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, have it turned on via the telcos. And as a result of the data broker information and deep web, dark web information, right? They have any other email address. They have their commonly used passwords. They also now have that phone number and they know which carrier it's on. They're able to go ahead and use that limited information from breaches to go ahead and convince them to do a SIM card swap or to just log in. Because oftentimes it's the same username and password they're using that's already been breached. But now the SMS code goes to their phone, the bad guy phone, as opposed to the good guys. And they're able to divert that, that, that text away from them. They're able to then log in and then go ahead and ladder the funds into a number of different other wallets and, and all the sorts. Um, it is a great attack. It's a streamlined attack. And it's one that's born out of data that already exists, already is present, is already leaked. And you know, that's a key part, you know that these people are in that wallet, in that cryptocurrency because of their investments. It's really, really an elegant attack. And it's one, quite honestly, that's working. It's actually working really, really well, which is what, you know, thank goodness our, our threat intelligence team, but really one of the cool things that they've been able to spot. And we've seen a marked increase in that this year. When you, when you say work really well, um, it d- depends on what, I guess, different, different criminal groups want to accomplish, but do they go in and wipe out the wallet? Do they grab a little bit? So it's undetected. Um, what, what kind of stories are you hearing? What, what is it? I think there's the research and then I think obviously you don't want to name any names, but yeah. any, uh, any stories that <laughs> you can say or mm-hmm. share. We've had some of the biggest firms, the most prolific investors that you can think of in this space have uh, money taken, have wallets, uh, money taken out of their wallets and transferred and all the rest. Um, we've actually seen small amounts, you know, literally small amounts. I mean, crypto is now up to, I think it was, uh, uh, Bitcoin was up to like 68,000 yesterday. Um, so new record high. Um, but, you know, we've seen small amounts in the uh, uh, under $100,000 up to like $300,000. I call that kind of small amounts in terms of equivalency. Um, into millions of dollars actually transferred. Um, now in terms of their total net, not necessarily going to impact them, but still millions. Um, you know, there is, has been a little bit of like, um, uh, what do you call it? Maybe gating or speed bumping on things, making sure that it's little amounts that go out. So there's not a big rush of a, no, we need to do a phone call, uh, verification back in. Once again, if the SIM car- or card or the, the phone is ported, it's going to go to the bad guy. Um, but. Um, we have seen people be really cautious about this, but it is a really, really sophisticated attack because it, you just can't run through a normal script. This has to be done very, very carefully, but you're almost assured of getting someone that actually has exactly what you want, how you'd want it stored, and in dollar amounts that are better than, quite honestly, some ransoms that are going on and better than knocking over some companies. And, the, and these folks, quickly, Marco, the, these folks are, I mean, they're... they're deep into some heavy duty activities like M and A's and investments and IPOs and all these different things that are, I'll just say at high stress, right? 
So the last thing they're, they're focused on that transaction, whatever they're, or the pitch they're hearing, or whatever it is that's immediate, they're yes, they care about their wallet, but it's easy to get distracted. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's uh, it's easy to get distracted. It's super easy to get distracted. Very, very, very uh, uh, super easy to get distracted. Speed matters a lot for them, and so sometimes there's a quick click, the quick this, the quick phone call that might come in from somebody pretending to be from wallet. We've actually had that happen to the VCs. They get the phone call and they know enough information about the wallet because they've already logged in uh, that they're able to have some some type of confidence or trust in their scam or scheme. Um, so there's a lot there. Yeah, I mean, I've talked so much about social engineering. I've talked with you. We talk about stuff that they are triggered and calculated exactly when you're going to get the, the one about... Uh, buying something online because it's Christmas and you're late or something happening in somebody's life. It's like, there's always that element in social engineering of urgency, fear, something that make a trick that doesn't make you think. And the reason why I'm saying this is because as Sean mentioned, these people don't want to think about this. I mean, they, you know, they, they're busy. And, uh, and so you, can have this conversation with us. We can share it with a ton of people. Maybe some of them are going to look at this, but they're going to be like, yeah, but this is great, but what am I going to do now? I'm not going to be the one worrying about this, so they need to outsource this. So what you guys do for this? Yeah, I mean, so in, in these in these cases, I mean, the, the things that really are important are this. Number one, you got to limit the attack surface, shrink that down. It makes it them a harder target to hit. Now it's kind of antithetical to their business because they want to be reached. They want to have be called all the rest. So what we'll do is actually be able to limit that data broker information down for their family and for other information that might enable some type of scam to have a better chance of happening. Second, in terms of deep web, dark web, I mean, really grabbing their passwords, showing them and telling them that their passwords are out there, which ones they are, and doing the threat and tell risk assessment on that. So they know whether or not they need to change their crypto password, whatever it is, the wallet, crypto, doesn't matter, but whether they need to change that, super important. You know, make sure that we're protecting our security operations center. It's not, you know, not just the endpoint, but it's the whole security operations center, protecting them, their devices, all their family's devices. So you don't have any malware on there. Um, and then making sure that they're, uh, uh, making sure that their phones are hardened. There are a number of different selections that can be done at the carriers to go ahead and prevent porting and SIM card swapping making sure those are enabled. Finally, getting them off of SMS based, text based, uh, all the factor authentication. Um, this is one of those areas where you absolutely 100% want a, either a, um, uh, application on your phone. So you have a software, uh, uh, enabled authenticator, you know, Google, Microsoft, authenticator, auth, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, where you have an authenticator or you have something that's actually a hardware token, hardware key, like a UB key, like a Google Titan key. Um, any one of those, um, of course, you know, hard storage or cold storage versus the hot worms. I mean, that also gets into a separate layer and that's really going to be dependent upon what the actual individual wants themselves. But once again, removing from, in this case, probably removing from, well, making sure dual factors on, but removing it from a phone based SMS based, uh, network, that's going to be the number one thing to do. If you said do, do one thing and one thing only going to be getting them on a, a software based authenticator. At the very least, yes, hardware based. People will write in an email. You know, it's got to be hardware based. <laughs> we want to we want to get them up to the we want to get them up to ninety five percent from SMS text and area of uh, you know maybe seventy percent cyber secure. Want to get them up to the eighty five ninety ninety five area. Yeah, you know, hardware token. We'll get them into ninety nine or something. We want to we want to just get them in the right direction um, and get them moving down that path. Well, t talk to me about this, Chris, because it, it's one. One thing to recognize, and kudos to you and the team for recognizing this trend and 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 the impact it's having on this community. It, it's another to understand where the exposure is, right? How it's how it's happening. It's another to understand what some of the mitigating controls are or uh, risk reduction areas are to reduce exposure and and the ability for them to succeed, the bad actors to succeed. And then it's another to actually do it. <laughs> so you mentioned a few things, right? Get hard in the phone, move oh. from SMS to other forms of 2FA. 
get set up multiple email accounts. So you're not using the same email for yeah. the important stuff like banking and wallets that you yeah. use for uh, your logging into TikTok or whatever it is. Uh, Sean, you can just keep those on your AOL. Yeah. All right. you, you know them all. You know them. Um, so talk to me about that because again, we, we've mentioned a couple of times that this isn't what they want to do. These folks want to do their deals. Yeah. Um, they need your help to get them that last mile, right? Because even if they did all that other stuff, it's it's that final last mile of getting it all in place that that's a real bear. It's sort of like a, um, you know, it's like a, every single person has a like a, a to do list at home, right? Um, uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna paint this wall. We're gonna you know fix this room up. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. Whatever. At some point in time, the list just gets like way too long, and then you like pretend it doesn't exist. You saw. Um, yeah, we all have them. <laughs> um, the fact of the matter is that, look, I mean, the reason why we're successful, the reason why our members, our customers, our clients are successful is we do it with them and for them. And with them is super important. We don't want to ever have access, have, have, ever have control, ever have the ability to access or see that information. What we want to do is do it with them and for them. So we want to effectuate the end result, staying there as a partner with them as part of our relationship. I always be like, oh, you know, what are you, a software company? Are you a tech you know, service company? Are you a tech enabled service? Are you this? Well, yeah, or, you know, tech enabled service, I guess, you know, if you want to classically define it as that. But at the end of the day, we're a relationship company. Anything cybersecurity and privacy related, we're going to help you achieve the results. We'll run next to you. We'll help you do the sit-ups. We'll help you lift the weights. We'll help you paint the walls. We'll do all the stuff to help you actually get there. And in many cases, we can do it on your behalf. But sometimes, right, like especially crypto, we're not going to take over your crypto account. We'll help you get there to better cybersecurity. And it's that extra oomph. It's like a, a you know, personal trainer. It's like a concierge medical doctor. It's like that, that wonderful company that helps you trim your palm trees in, in Naples on uh, markup, right? It's like, you know how to do it. Probably a really bad idea to climb the 100 foot palm tree. You're going you're gonna to break your neck. Not a good idea. We do the stuff that is hard that people don't want to do with them and for them. You know, going back to that uh, beautiful day in Santa Monica when you told us about this uh, over a drink. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, the word that really got me was concierge. And, you, and I was like, is he going to say it? Is he going to say it? I'm going to say it for you. No, you did. Because that's that's the key. It's, it's a concierge service. So if people are used to this kind of concierge at the hotel, when you travel, when you get a car, whatever it is, this is what it is. It's personal, it's reliable, and it's not intrusive. And you develop this relationship to do what works for them. You're not just one fit at all. You you go in and you're like, okay, what do you need? You're the guy, right? You don't yeah. you don't want to fix the home yourself. Call the guy, please. It is, you know, you know, it's interesting. It's one of the things that a lot of early on. I mean, there, there is there is a lot of hard work to get into a scalable, uh, you know, to run a scalable business that is concierge, that is bespoke. That's like going to the tailor and getting the perfect dress, getting the perfect suit. Every single thing just fits. It's all tailored right to your body, right at that moment in time. And that's what we do. We do it with every single person. And the husband and the wife, they're sometimes massively different. The kids, sometimes they're massively different. Every single person is bespoke concierge cybersecurity and privacy protection for them using our platform but every single thing of what they get is tan tailored for them and we just figured out a way to do it scale um and and with uh with uh great great kind of metrics so to speak so but i've any but also, but also with style. style that that's where your research team comes into to play, oh my god right this theme is awesome yeah absolutely the, the style they they know what the trends are they know what to watch out what do you want to dress in that event, yep. Uh, you you want to be prepared. You want to you don't want to wear something five years old that, that's not going to hold up. That'd be that'd be trendy. It's, it's um it's actually um I mean we literally we literally morph and change what we are doing almost month by month in terms of when we spot something we adapt we include it. When Apple, when Windows, when changes are made, when Facebook, whatever, we're responding to that. Where's the new privacy menu? Where's the new privacy selection? How do we think about this? How do we go ahead and tackle this? Um, you know, when threats and vulnerabilities come out, you know, X, Y, and Z firewall, we're like, wow, we know that we have 2000 of our clients homes that are using that type of device. How do we actually think about this differently folks? Like literally we're there to think for them so they don't have to, and we're there to take care of it for them. So they don't have to, but also when they want us, when they need us, we will hand tailor everything right for them. And that's what they love. That's what they love. 
Yeah. And you know, we have many conversations with you. Every time you discover something, you come. We have a new chapter of the brand story with uh, Black Cloak and yeah. you. And sometimes you bring other friends. We had fantastic conversation. I want to invite actually people to check the Black Cloak direct directory wow. on uh, ITSP Magazine because there is this story, there is car stories, there is many more. We talk about privacy Fine. and uh, and it's a great way to discover what you guys do and, and the way you do it. And um, I'm going to say, Sean, uh, uh, check your wallet again because it may be even more empty now. <laughs> even more. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh... I think I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll look to Chris to help me uh, keep my wallet in check. <laughs> well, I'll help you out. We'll make sure you keep all the coin right. there. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. Well, Chris, it, it's always a pleasure, my friend, and uh, we we look forward to and enjoy these conversations. They're always informative and and uh, and educational and certainly meaningful for for those on the other side of of these threats that you're you're seeing. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully. Hopefully folks understand, especially this particular community, VCs and PEs and, and uh, another high net worth, the, the rock star. <laughs> that rock star. We want, them, oh, we, want to, we want to protect their wallets too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we, we want them to be able to buy that new guitar. They, they need it. Guitar. They need it. <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, thanks so much. And uh, thanks everybody for listening and watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. And Chris, hopefully we'll see you in person. You'll see me. RSA, uh, definitely in RSA, yeah. 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 So we'll all be there. For that. Excited for that. So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe. Follow Black Cloak. Connect with Chris. And uh, stay cool and protected, everybody. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thank you, Chris. Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24.